Anthony, Hi. Jessica. Hello. Hi. Thanks hey, for having us today. Hey, congratulations on Malum. Thank you. Did you see it? Did you watch it? Yeah, I think I was going to lose my lunch uh, halfway through, but it is <laughs> terrifying and uh, a <laughs> bloody movie, I do have to admit. So. <laughs> good, good. Just look at me like that. She made her horse laugh. You made her horse laugh. You my arms. <laughs> Well, let, let me let me start with this, Anthony. Um, I guess the question on everybody's mind is: after ten years after the last shift, why did you want to do a remake? Why not a prequel or a sequel or you know anything in in that sort? I think you know coming at it from that point of view, in terms of you know why not do a sequel? I think I think. The first movie, which I love, I'm completely happy with the first film. We did it on such a small budget. The only thing that I was disappointed with it is that the release, albeit it has had it has had longevity for sure, is that it didn't reach the audience I wanted it to reach. Both like I, I made the movie for a theatrical experience. It never did that. So when the Welcome Villain team approached me and started to kind of ask questions about the last ship world, it felt right to go back, reimagine it, delve deeper with a larger budget, tell more of that story we kind of had to leave on the table, and get it in theaters, get it in front of as many people as possible, get it to not just genre fans, but a more widescreen audience so they can sit down in the theater and be like, terrified for 90 minutes and then and then we can say all right now we've laid the groundwork if we want to expand this world even more the characters are more flushed out now than they were in that first film wow jessica it sounds like you have bigger shoes to fill because that, now you have to fill those uh theater seats uh what <laughs> initially drew you to this project then jessica um i uh was asked to I mean, to have a read, because I knew you guys were looking for someone, and I read, like, I so my agent sent me the script, and I read it, and I was a, a bit hesitant, because I was nervous of, of that, I mean, I looked up Anthony, and I saw that last shift was a cult, like, you know, a little cult classic, so I, I didn't, I, I don't know, I was like, I don't want to jump on this, I don't know if I can do this, it's also a lot to do like she's just at a she's not under pressure for so long um and there's no letting up like there's you know so I I would I didn't really believe in myself that I could do that um but then I talked to Anthony and and we really got along and that is the thing I think um I need I, I work well in like a loving environment you know and sometimes there's times where like it's it's harsh and you gotta just do it but I feel there was a lot of nurturing on set because everybody wanted to make uh th this they had a vision and I think Anthony has such a clear vision yeah Anthony and Scott really just knew what they wanted and that helps so much because sometimes you're on set especially when it's genre and mm -hmm. you don't really know what you're doing but oh we're just gonna add this a scream in here this and there but everything on Malum felt very precious and they everybody wanted to do the best that they they could so I guess just talking to welcome villain guys and and Anthony it just made me feel safe and I could I could take the job so wow Anthony in the since it has been nearly, I want to say, 10 years since that last film, I mean, it almost feels like James Camerish, like you, you've been waiting for, you know, better technology. Has has things have changed since the past 10 years that you felt like is an improvement in the horror genre when you made this film? I think, I think yeah, I think there's also been, um, there's been a resurgence in practical effects. I've always been an advocate of practical effects. And I think there was a, a time, probably about 10 years ago and, and right around that and before that, that, you know, we were delving so much into digital and, and there was so much being replaced by digital and we've lost so many like model making to digital and, and matte painting to digital. And, and that was kind of going away with practical effects too. And then there was suddenly a resurgence 
mainly by horror filmmakers and sci-fi filmmakers that were like, no, like, yeah. like practical is still always going to be better. Let, let VFX help it. But that was a huge thing that, you know, the, we were on such a limited budget on that first film that I knew with this one, I'm like, I want to put a big chunk of our budget into practical effects, get great designers like the Russells and give the audience as much new stuff as we could and as much new gags as we could throughout the film that they were always seeing something new and terrifying up until the very end. No, I, I, I do, I do agree. I, I'm going to learn not to eat snacks in your any more of your films. That's, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't eat because I like that you wanted to do practical yeah. stuff. Other because I was reading it, and the first time I read it, I was like, I really hope they're doing more practical things with this because that would just suck. I was like, that would. Bother. That's what made you take it the practical. So it wasn't me just being charming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was um. It was it was that. It was that. Yeah. If anything, you made it worse. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I could see that. <laughs> well, well, Jessica, then 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 tell us this. You know, being the leading star of this, did you actually have any second thoughts of getting down and dirty in in this film? No, I wanted to do something crazy. Um. And I just didn't know when that would ever happen. But I guess last year it was nuts getting to do that. However, you know, you're always a little, just you're ner you're nervous. I really wanted to give it my all, so that's all I can, that's all I can do. I, I really wanted to do my best. But I, I, I'm a huge fan of, I don't know. I love possession and Isabella kind of losing her mind and you know stuff like I, I'm, I love I always wanted to go to those places that is very intriguing to me so yeah I was I was excited to do it but then after you lay it to rest you're like what just happened like <laughs> what did I just do so yeah I, I you could say I'm, I'm it, very excited but um you know you're just a little, a little there's a little anxiety there <laughs> So Jessica, was it easy to get into the headspace of Officer Jessica and um, you know put it away at the end of the day? I'm just imagining like my split personalities. The other one is Officer Jessica. Yeah, that is her um, split personality. <laughs> um, I that yeah that was it was hard the first week. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but. Anthony is so great at working with actors and he had he always knew like where the actor's place was um an hour like an hour before a day before that scene would take place he'd have information of this is what has been going on and I would try and think of that as much as possible um it was nice being in a place with her where she having the frame of mind, even when everything is happening to her, that she has to get to the, the bo to the bottom of something, that really helped a lot because that kind of would build up to moments where it was just sheer uh, terror or um, uh, panic or just a complete, I think sometimes she's just awestruck. Because mm -hmm. she, at a certain point, I would play it as she thinks she's... Um, something mentally is breaking with her and that is how I would play the logic in the scene but I'm clearly losing my mind that's the only way I can explain this yeah um so sometimes after a while doing that emotionally it's very taxing you get it you go home and you just stare at a wall for like an hour <laughs> you know because you're like what is going on and then, you, then you eat a sandwich and then you fall asleep and you get up through it all through it all shit. <laughs> and Anthony, I mean I, one one of the things that one can't imagine is to basically redo your own film, but you have to make a little bit of adjustments uh um to your story. Did you make the adjustments um trying to figure out whether it if it didn't work the first time around, or you just made adjustments you think that this is better this time around? Yeah, I, you know, I think when we first talked and w when I talked to Welcome Villain, they were like, you know, when you're writing a treatment, they're like, put everything that you couldn't do in the first movie into this movie. And, and I don't know if it was, 
it was hard to quantify if there was anything I didn't do. You know, I, I'm very practical when it comes to this is my budget. This I'm, I'm writing for this. I'm writing for this location. With this movie, I think it was much more. We tweaked a couple big things at the beginning, it, like Jess. Jessica Lauren, her motivation is completely different in this movie than it is in, the, in the, the first film. And to me, that makes this just a completely different movie from page one. So I, once we got into that writing phase, I never felt like I was making the same movie. There was always, I would, there were bits in the first movie where I was like, listen, these, these scares, these things deserve to be in this new film. People who haven't seen that first movie should experience those beats in this movie as well and but there's not a lot of that and then everything else was just like the character motivates the story so it always felt fresh and new to me like i was just making a completely different movie and so, how do you, fans, so how do you reassure you know the cult fans of the last movie want to see something like this again i think the main thing is we don't betray anything from that first film you know i, I and I think if you love the first movie, you're never going to, you're not going to watch this and be like, oh, they ruined the first one. It's just, I feel like you're going to, you're going to see like Easter eggs that existed from the first one. You're going to probably enjoy that. And hopefully you're going to come away with this feeling that like you just watched a completely different film that created a new mythology for, for you as a fan. That's what I hope. And with this face. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well let me wrap it up with one last question because you know i am a fan of horror horror genre myself i just love watching it uh by myself in the dark you know in bed and so on but i i but both for both of you this is not the first go around in the horror genre um so i want to know what is your love of the horror genre in your words i'll, I'll start with anthony and then i'll conclude it with jessica I mean, horror was, I was introduced to horror at a very young age. My father is, he was, he is a fan of, of horror in, in a more true, my, my father's in his 90s. So he That's was, amazing. He, right up, he, 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 really cool. my father, he was much older than my mother. And so I grew up with an era where he was a super fan of like the Universal Monster movies. And then when I was a child, he was renting like, Phenomena was like one of the first movies I saw as a kid or like Nightmare on the Street. And so I was very young watching these movies. Um, so to me, it was the practical effects side and stuff that really, for the longest time when I was a kid, I was like, I want to do that. And back then you couldn't go on YouTube. It was like finding some special on PBS about like the making of the thing or Star Wars. And you're like, holy shit, like this is how they make these monsters. I love that. And then when I went to college and stuff, I, it became more of the filmmaking side. But at the end of the day, I just like scaring people. I like creating, in real life, creating a situation that will like, just scare someone in, in, in a way that they're not going to see coming. Like, why would you do that to me? I'm your friend. I'm like, ah. <laughs> and you're like, you can ask my question. Why would you do that to me? <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I just like scaring people. So I like making scary movies because of that. All right, Jessica. Do you like the movie Dog Soldiers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Ale, yeah. yeah, that was like in a... Oh, yeah, I guess this is... <laughs> yeah, it's not saying this. Um, uh, I think for, uh, when I grew up, I got um, I, I got to watch anything. And my dad loved films so much. So he would always want me to watch some... Uh, well, you know, he he loved he loved he truly loved everything across the board. And but then I didn't really I also didn't really have a bedtime. Uh, shout out to my parents, not a great thing. But uh, I would watch BBC, and they would always some and film four when I got to like my teens. They would always have a series. There was like one series where they played like audition at midnight and like dumplings, and then I got to I remember that's what slowly introduced me to like, I like things that are extreme. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I saw like uh, possession. And then at my, with my dad, I watched the thing and he didn't like you know, the, well, I remember one time he caught me watching funny games. And he just said, this is just so disturbing. <laughs> like he was 
can't watch this, Jessica. Like I have said that I, I love I like this. I don't know why. Um, and and then I, you know, I would from then on, I would just want to watch everything sort of coming out in the movie. So like for me, it was I think at that time it was like the Grudge was coming out, the remake, and mm -hmm. you know, you had oh my paranormal activity came out. I remember when that hit and yeah, I just had a love for it for that. And then I had a, a DVD, that's where I had job, that's where I got job soldiers, DVD from Tesco. And it was a, a, a double feature of The Descent and Dog Soldiers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Both so I lo lo love that. Yeah. There. Well, that, that, that's when we know we could get our, still get our DVDs at Tesco. So the <laughs> Tesco, <laughs> Tesco's an agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anthony, Jessica. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, Jessica, thank you uh, very much uh, for carrying this conversation. This movie is so disturbing. It has to be watched on the big screen. That is for <laughs> sure. Thank you. Awesome. Um, thank you. Hopefully we get to do this again. Bye now. Good.